Hello everyone, my name is Marcel de Jong and I'm going to be taking you through some of the uh, uh, features that uh, have been, um, that are fairly new as well as uh, like 2013. Uh, we'll also cover kind of like general concepts in Mudbox and then we'll also, I'll also go through uh, some of the interoperability issues and some of the interoperability capabilities between Mudbox and Maya. So let's just uh, start off with this uh, character right in here. Let's go ahead and um, uh, look at the very first thing that um, you would normally run into, which is user interface. And in 2013, we added a number of new features related to the uh, UI. So if I go in here and um, unlock the UI, there's a locking switch that you can turn off. We can then go in here and um, uh, import UIs, export UIs that we set up. We can kind of customize this however we want. So if I were to go in and say let's drag this off, you can make these floating windows. As part of uh, what's possible in terms of editing the UI, when you save off custom UIs, uh, these, these floating windows are saved as part of that. Or you can go ahead and dock this someplace else. If I dock this over here, you can see how that shows up. If I expand it, you can see how the icons are kind of accommodating the new space. If I drag these, uh, let's say we'll close this and we'll use these falloffs. I can have these falloffs added as a tab so I can go ahead and jump between the two tabs or I can drag this off and dock this down here so we kind of have a split window top to bottom. Maybe we want to add the stamps in there as well and you don't have to tear them off to become floating windows first. You can just drag and drop them to where you want them. Um, and then, of course, you can go in here and get rid of whatever you don't want to look at if you don't need any of these brushes so that you have a little more vertical real estate on the screen. One of the other things that's nice is that under Windows, there are certain windows in here like Preferences or maybe like a, a log uh, that you'd like to dock. You can do that also and then resize this to kind of accommodate the rest of your screen so that as you're exporting things or as you're bringing things into Maya, um, it'll kind of give you a running log of what's happening if there's anything wrong that you need to fix or and so this can all be saved as part of a custom UI a mud UI file do I have a folder set up here called UIs and let's call this uh, test and write out the mud UI file and let's say yes we'll overwrite that and so if I wanted to import some UIs, we could just simply go in here and say import UIs. If I have, uh, let's say we'll open up the first one here. You can see the first one actually has a couple of floating windows associated with it. And so it remembers exactly um, if you have that in your UI. Uh, it writes that out as part of the text file. We can go ahead and import maybe like a paint based or a painting UI. So we have a color editor and some uh, paint brushes over here and maybe some, uh, uh, some fall off controls on the bottom left and the property sheet or the property window on the bottom right. Uh, I might want to incorporate some stencils and some stamps etc just to kind of facilitate painting. So let's go ahead and reset the layout and it'll take you to a default layout and it's a good idea to lock your UI whether you're using a custom UI or the default UI uh, and that's simply because these do double dotted outlines they're easy to grab so as you're painting and stroking in the software onto your character it's easy to, to grab one of these and kind of drag it across the the, uh, the screen so let's go ahead and reset this and then lock the UI so we can't go anywhere with it. Okay, so that's uh, that's the first thing. Now, some of the other things that have been added in recent uh, versions, not 2013, are um, marking menus. Now, marking menus we've had for a while, but we added marking menus as well as the hot box, which is uh, sensitive as to where your cursor sits on screen. And then inside of that, you get all of your marking menus as well. So you get a marking menu for your scene up here, allowing you to turn on the grid or turn off the grid. And these are very responsive. Um, marking menus. They're very much like you know, what we had, for example, in Power Animator, very fast. Uh, we can go in here and lock or unlock a model if we wanted to. Go ahead and unlock it. And we can go in here and access all of the transformation tools. These are the tool shelves you have on the bottom left. So Sculpt, Paint, Curve, Pose, Select tools, they're in here. Uh, their posing tools up here, their sculpting tools, painting tools, and then selection tools. And then down here we get some uh, specific tools related to the model. Now those tools you can also access by right clicking over here or right clicking over here, which will give you two different sets of menus. 
Okay, so um, something else that's kind of nice is to be able to switch views from within the marking menus. Otherwise, it becomes a pretty cumbersome type ordeal, having to go to the object list, finding the camera, and then uh, looking through that camera, and then going through that same process if you wanted to get back to the perspective view. So it's a lot easier doing that up here. We can go to a top view and maybe frame that. Um, we can go to a, a side view directly from our top view and then frame that, or we can just simply go back to a perspective view. So it's a quick way to kind of jump around in your views. One of the other things that's nice that we added in 2013 is um, the, the ability to be able to see what node that it is that you're working on. So let's say we're working on sculpt layers or paint layers, it doesn't really matter. You could see that in the header right at the very top there for the particular object that we have in the scene. And if we look at this, you could see that we have different kinds of objects in the scene. We have that middle strap right there. We have that same middle strap down here. We have a loincloth over here. If I isolate that, you can see what that looks like. Let's go ahead and bring that back. We have some smaller bits and pieces like a nose ring, um, a scrunchie for the hair, and there's some other bits and pieces to this character. So when you pick um, geometries, then obviously you know what you're working on, but half the time you don't want to have to pick something. You just want to paint or paint across uh, geometries and then have it end up in the right place. It's cloth object that we're working on, or if I click on the body, you can see now it's body object that we're working on, and the shader that's associated with it is, is called material. So up here we know that this is the material associated with this character, and if I wanted to go ahead and rename this, and this is also something that's new in 2013, we can go ahead and uh, rename this to maybe let's call it uh, minotaur underscore body or something like that. And so we've renamed a node for that shader knowing exactly what that shader is doing. Other things that we could do in here is we could simply say let's create some new materials. Maybe I want to create like a new mud box material and have that automatically assigned to the character. Or maybe we'll create another uh, CG effects based material, which you know we can assign directly to that character. And all those materials start stacking up in here. We have a material one here. Uh, we have uh, a material here. We have different materials. Let's go ahead and create another one. If I go into my uh, CG effects folder here, I have a couple of examples uh, laid out. If I go ahead and bring in the dir.fx uh, shader, let's go ahead and isolate just that model. Go ahead and isolate that. I don't want to edit the material. Um, we can select this uh, shader and start to tweak you know, things like the specular. Uh, we can tweak things like the stroke angle if we want to go ahead here and kind of have this happen at a 45 degree angle. Kind of looks like a half tone printing screen of some sort um, that's applied to the surface. So this is a CGFX shader file, dir.cgfx, that's being loaded into the CG material directly into Mudbox. Now if I go back to our um, existing material and this will be Minotaur body. Let's go ahead and reassign that and then let's go ahead and show all. We can also over the the object itself delete unused materials and let's go ahead and OK that and you'll see that in the scene right now all those materials are eliminated. We just have the materials left that are assigned to something. So that's something that's new as well. Delete unused materials.